Hey, this is Black Titanic. First of all, I want to thank all of my subscribers, new and old. And about the Titanic book, I just want to let you guys know that I am an independent publisher. Now, look, I learned that from you young people. Y'all remember when Tupac and, and um, all those rappers like Ice Cube came up in the 90s? They were selling CDs out of their cars. They learned entrepreneurship to keep the money out of the other people's hands, the larger society. So I learned that from you young people. That's what I learned that from. I am an independent publisher. If you're interested in the book, you have to email me directly and I will send a book to you seven business days and the book is fifteen dollars so we got that out the way anything else about the book yeah yeah that's it i got the book out the way and i talked about the subscribers if y'all see these little up that writing up there i'm just reminding myself so um we're gonna talk about this crystal jordan um interview Marceau and uh, Tisha, they dragged Mel on Krista Jordan. They dragged that woman. And Marceau was gossiping like a girl. I can see why he need a bra. Y'all saw him when he, he took his shirt off on the beach. I'm like, oh my God, how do, how do she lay next to some titties bigger than hers? This man had a nerve to uh, body shame big girls. Did y'all see that interview? He's talking about he didn't like big girls. And he big. His body flabby. I'm an old woman and ain't no man like that gonna lay next to me. No man with no titties bigger than mine ain't gonna lay next to me because I don't want no titties flopping all over my face. I, oh, 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 Lord. So anyhow, so my soul tried to body shame big girls. But one thing he need to know is he need to keep his own shirt on because I'm telling you, that was a horrible sight to see. When my, when, when my soul was standing up there on that beach with his shirt off, it traumatized me. Oh, Lord. Keep your shirt on. Keep your shirt on, my soul. So let's just talk about this Krista Jordan interview. Now, look, they drug mail. Now, both of them said that they forgive Martell, but they didn't forgive Mel. They said that Martell apologized. Even though Mel apologized also, they still don't forgive her. Now I know why. Do y'all remember the, that 40 acres deal? That would have bought millions and millions of dollars to them, right? Mel found out something and Mel bailed out. She bailed out because, see, Mel like money. That would have really put a lot of money in Mel's pocket also. But that sister is smart. She bailed out. And is it possible? Because she knew about how they don't handle their business financially. Is it possible? She knew about the crimes and she did not want to be attached to that. But anyhow, Mel bailed out and caused them millions of dollars because that, that was their way of trying to get up to be a millionaire. So they count all those cookies when, uh, 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 they try to count all those cookies that they don't have. Now, we're still on, on the financial thing. The hopes, the hopes help. Tisha and Marceau out. Y'all remember that, don't y'all? Miss Van did too. Miss Van, Miss Van, uh, and Mel, and uh, 
Mel's brother, they all are real estate brokers and they've been in this game a long time. That's why they call Van in to help grow their business, right? They have been really nice to the Scots. But y'all, now we got the, now we can see what we're dealing with. We always knew that we were dealing with some uh, backstabbing people, some ungrateful people. But now, since we got their criminal records, we're dealing with allegedly thugs. Thugs, that's what we're dealing with. This is who male dealing with. So that explains how they able to drag male and how they able to be ungrateful because they want to be the new power couple. They want to be the new power couple and can't even pay a $257 fine. Have to get liens on a house for as little as 200 and some dollars. So these are the big ballers that we're talking about. So then Martel goes to and asks them for a favor because, you know, y'all know everything Martel been through. He tried to find his way back financially. So he remembered, we put the hoax on game. We put Marceau and Tisha Scott on game. Now, maybe they're going to help me. So guess what, y'all? They're not, they don't even have the decency to help this man. Tisha, uh, Tisha, just like her mama girl, that girl got her mama down pat. She says no, period. Okay. My soul, he was going to say no anyway, but see, he slick. He left Tisha to do his dirty work because when, when Martel came to him about, uh, uh, trying to get him a lifted hand, he said he had to ask Tisha, but he had never, ever, ever respected Tisha's decision. Y'all know that. Now, I'm going to go on to Carlos. Carlos have Tisha and Destiny on his show. Then they go drag Van. They, they drag Miss Van now out of all people. I, that just blew me when Tisha, with the type of low life mother she got, would drag Van. But see, I'm going to tell you something. Karma hit her back in a flash with the bat of an eye. Her mother came on there talking about, oh, yeah, she just loves sex, 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 sex. And she loved to put pop bottles between her coochie and open it. Yeah, karma hit her back in her face <laughs> like a bat of the eye when she was trying to paint Miss Van as being trash. But her mother is trash and her mother can't. Oh, Lord. Now, I, you know what? I got to say this before I forget it. This woman said I couldn't talk. So even when I'm in my lower self, I'm able to speak better than you, Wanda. But anyway, you're a non-factor in a way, Wanda. Now, I want to ask Carlos this. Why would you bring someone like uh, Wanda to represent the Black woman, to represent Black families? You had Van. You had Miss Van, Miss Vanessa Roger, the author, the broker. You had this outstanding woman that had raised the outstanding child. You even had this woman, it got a business mind. Anyway, you guys, hope you guys enjoy uh, the Black Titanic. Hey, y'all, I just want y'all to see this. I'm not going to go into this, but look at this. Watch this. Watch Marceau's face. He mad as hell on here. Love and Marriage Huntsville Creative explain why he doesn't force Marceau to answer infidelity question directly. Now, I'm going to stroll down here, y'all, and look at Marceau's face. 
He is so mad that he biting his teeth. I bet you his teeth gonna be bleeding. I mean, his gums and lips gonna be bleeding, bleeding. Cause they on him about this infidelity. He wants y'all to shut up. Now look at Tisha. Get a closer look at Tisha. Ooh, she pissed too. But him, ooh, look at that, y'all. Whoa, he pissed. Now, did he try to act like, like, uh, the blogs don't bother him about this infidelity, but look at this. A picture tells a thousand words. Look at her. And now let me go back to the out the outline says Love and marriage, Huntsville creator. That's when why he doesn't force Marceau to answer infidelity questions directly. And talking about Carlos, he don't never ask him to, you know, really answer anything. Okay, this is Marcel Scott, age 42, Huntsville, Alabama. People that, that's close to him is Letitia Scott, Mark Scott, and Marcel Scott. Now, let's pull this record, pull this report. Now, what I'm interested in is... While I'm putting this report, I'm interested in their financial situation. Excuse me, y'all. There we go, Marcel Scott. Let's go down. To, uh, we already did the people connected to him. Let's go to the financial part. They got four. Okay, no bankruptcies on the record right now. But they have liens were found. Abatement charges, two of them, 246-11, So if they all, people put a lien on whatever it is that they have for $246, look, Masu Scott, uh, abatement charges. Wow. County city tax lien. You're not able to, uh, pay Two hundred thirty-eight dollars. Foreclosures. They got two, right? Oh, I forgot. Go back to this other abatement charges. Two hundred and thirty-eight dollars and forty-four cent. County city tax lien placement. Madison, Alabama abatement charges. This is Masus eleven twenty-six twenty-four twenty-fourteen. Masus Scott. Okay, y'all, this is on my soul, Scott. What I'm doing now is trying to see if they really ballers like they say. This is continuing on. So let's go back down here. I want to go to the foreclosures because we did the links. Well, I said they have two foreclosures, right? I'm going to click in one to let you know who it is. So there we go. Let's go see if I can find his name down here. Two foreclosures. Marso Scott. Notice of share sale. Let's keep moving. So I showed y'all that he has two foreclosures. Uh, what else? Professional license. None. How are they, you know what? And I even saw where, um, his wife, a real estate license is expired a, a while ago, y'all. Foreclosures were found in our records, two of them, uh, in Madison County. Now, these are two liens. These are cheap now. Abatement charges, two of them, $246.11, $238.44. Now, these people don't... They didn't put a lien on a property over $246 counter city tax lien. I'm getting ready to say these people don't like to pay their bills now. Uh, Madison, Alabama, abatement charges. Now, you know what? I looked that up and, and they, the property, when you have something on your property that's, that's polluting the air or, uh, a, yeah, pollute. It say if you have something on your property that's polluting the air, 
So something they had on their property that was nasty. These people are nasty, I guess. That's on it. That, look up abatement charges, y'all. It says uh, owners that have property, uh, if it's something polluting the air, you get abatement charges. So they, and they got a, a county city tax lien on that because it was only $246.11. And as you can see on a Marcel Scott, they're not bawling like they say they are. This is Letitia Scott. Now, uh, what I'm doing is trying to show y'all, trying to see if they these big rolling people, wealthy people like they claim. Now, possible relative Marvin Robert Sebastian Wanda Moore. So we know this is the right Letitia Denise Scott, age 40, Madison County. Let's pull this report. Now, I'm just going to uh, stroll through it. Y'all saw the, the report, the criminal report. Let's just see what she's doing. Letitia, Denise Scott, uh, criminal records. We know she got eight. Oh, uh, she really got nine. Don't forget the theft charges where uh, Wanda said that that the baby had a bear in the stroller. And... Uh, that's that's what Wanda said. And Wanda said that was the only charges. And then I pulled up eight more. One, they got something on the financial thing. Let's just see what they got. She got lean foreclosures of what? Okay. Individual income tax placement. Liens were found $645.41. Now, y'all know these people don't like to pay their bills. Pay your bill. Oh, only $645.41. Letitia Scott, let's see. State tax lien, Madison, Alabama, individual income tax. They had a lien on that. They don't pay their bills. You see, you, Melody, I hope you're looking at this. Because if y'all loan them any money, you ain't going to get paid back. Allegedly. Tax lien date 8 9 20, 18, and to give you the certified number and the ID. Tax period 12 31 2014. So she had a lien. Let's go into her career. Y'all know about uh y'all know about their property on Xfinity, uh Xfinity. Let's this is what I found. Real estate after 12-2018. Real estate expired 12-2018. Let's see what's going on, girl. Okay, it says active, real estate active, real estate agent, license type. All right, don't let me. Letitia Scott, it expired 12-20-2018, expiration date 9-30-2020. Now, Letitia, you better get it together unless this is not updated, y'all. But according to this, her a license, her, per, and then it say no professional license were found. But according to this, her, um... Real estate license is expired. Now, what you're about to see is taken from the book of Black Titanic. And this is a uh, old book. The first book that ever came out when the Titanic sank. Eyewitness report. Survivors told what they saw on that boat and what they were doing to Negroes on the boat. Now, it is the only book that I found because any books that you see about the Titanic, black people is omitted. Man left the room and Melinda never touched a woman in labor. Melinda never touched a woman in labor. Instead, she wrote a letter for Alex and wrapped it inside plastic and stuck it down my bra. As the boat sank, water separated. Now, the water was up to my waist. 
and while my Negro friends and I was trying to leave the bottom deck. The gate was locked, and in desperation, the males began to kick the gate down. Suddenly, the gate opened, and the white crew members began to shoot any black face on sight. My brother Ernest, remember Ellen is describing the scene. My brother Ernest shielded himself in front of Melinda and me, and white crew members shot him in the face. That's some cold stuff right there. At once, a big fat white crew member grabbed Melinda's arm and said, you have to go take care of my wife. She's in labor. Melinda was screaming with grief. She was in shock, and as we entered the top deck, the white female was in labor. Melinda didn't hold her tongue. You're the same people that killed my friends and the love of my life, and you? You mean you want me to deliver your white baby? You mean you want me to save your white life? I heard the gun click, says Ellen. I yell, I'll help Melinda de deliver your baby, but you can't stand over us with a gun to her head. You must leave the room. I yell, I want my nurse to go with me. So right now, you know, Ellen is using her white privilege, and she's telling this man that, you know, Melinda works for her, you know, because he thinks she's a white lady. I heard the gun clicked. I yelled, I'll help Melinda deliver your baby, but you can't stand over us with a gun in our head. You must leave the room. I yelled, I want my nurse to go with me. Meanwhile, water was rushing fast on the upper deck. And you can hear the minigun shooting as well as smell death in the air. The man left the room and Melinda never touched the woman in labor. Instead, she wrote a letter for Alex and wrapped it inside plastic and stuck it down my bra. As the boat sank, water separated us. The pregnant white woman was washed away as well as Melinda. I was washed overboard. I saw some records that I could cling to. And so many black people was in the ocean. And so many Negroes was tossed alive and overboard. Many hours went by. Some Negroes were still swimming. But the rescue boats would just pass them by and pick up whites only. Then Negroes began to do for self trying to get into the overloaded boats, but whites would kick them away. One white man kicked it, a male Negro. He grabbed the white man's leg, and he flipped everybody in the lifeboat in the ocean. They drowned, except for the Negro. Hours passed. Oh, man, I was freezing. I mean, I was freezing at the near death, y'all. I was freezing at near death, watching courts floating by, whites, blacks, children as well. I thought I was hallucinating when a big, strong black man grabbed me. I mean, a strong black man grabbed me. He pulled me on a homemade boat with all Negroes on it. Ellen, he called, where is Melinda and your brother? This is taken from the book, The Black Titanic, and um, Melinda was engaged to Ellen's brother. Okay, y'all, this section right here is, this is a book that I found maybe 11 years later after doing, trying to research and research to find any book that would explain whether black people was on the Titanic besides me talking about it. 
But anyway, uh, I found this book finally. This is from the first hand account. This is the first book that came out after the Titanic sink in 1912. And I and the, I had never seen it before. You will never see this again in any other writings about these what happened on the Titanic with the blacks that worked on the Titanic. Now, I'm going to talk about the wireless operator. I'm going to talk about COD messages. And the reason I bought this in because tied to the Titanic was Glenn Bear Wood. He was a black inventor over 60 patents. Uh, and in fact, Thomas Edison, he had to sue Thomas Edison because Thomas Edison was trying to steal and claim his stuff. All the white people were trying to claim his stuff. But he held fast. He was bold. He won all his lawsuits. But anyway, the Titanic was using his wireless operator. He was responsible for the first wireless communication from boats, airplanes, uh, trains, you name it. Glenn Bear Wood. Anyhow, let me just read this. This was the story told by the vice president afterwards on the PL. One husky Italian told the writer on the Pierre that the way in which the men who were shot down was horrible. His sympathy was with the men who were shot. They were only trying to save their lives, he said, while his operator died at his post. On board the Titanic, the wireless operator with a life belt about his waist was hitting the instrument that was sending out CQD messages morning. Struck on icebergs, said this was the warning message, CQD. Shall I tell the captain to turn back and help? Flashed a reply from the Carpathia, the, uh, the other book, another boat. Yes, old man. The Titanic wireless operator responded, Guess we'll an hour later when the second wireless man came into the box like room to tell uh his companion what the situation was, he found a Negro stoker. Say it again. He found a Negro stoker. Now, aboard the Titanic, another name for stoker is a fireman. They worked the bowels of the Titanic. Y'all probably have never heard of the bowels of the Titanic. Let's just say it's the basement. But that was what that's how the Negro Stokers got on there. They had them on as firemen. It was a cold strike in 1912, and all the white ladies refused to go to work. They had built this exclusive. Uh, expensive ship and they were not going to lose no money. So this is how all these black people got on the side of it because it was a cold strike. It was a strike and they started hiring black people aboard the Titanic. So these Negro Stoker, they worked in the bowels of the Titanic and they were shoveling coals into the big boiler. That's what they were doing. They were hot down, man. It was very hot. They were later named as the Black Gang. Also, you did have a few white um, Irish men down there, but uh, they, I was told they couldn't take the heat like the Black men, so they they they, they couldn't stand it down there. But let me get on, on talking. He found a Negro stoker creeping up behind the operator. And he saw him raise a knife over his head. He said afterwards, he was among those rescues that he realized at once that the Negro intended to kill the operator in order to take his life belt from him. Now y'all know that some this this man wanted a life belt. He was not trying to steal no life belt. And why would he have a life belt in the first place? Why wouldn't these blacks, why would blacks refuse a life belt? That, that is the real question here, and that's what we're looking at. But anyway, let's, let's keep on going. Let me read this over. 
Uh, the Negro intended to kill the operator in order to take the life belt from him. So they had refused to give the blacks aboard the Titanic a light bill. The second operator pulled out his revolver and shot the Negro dead. And you know what? It's just something how uh, this is so similar to what my grandfather was telling me. Moving on along. So the Negro was shot dead. What was the trouble? Asked the operator. That Negro was going to kill you and steal your life belt. The second man replied, you know what, this is pissing me off. You know what, the nerve of them thinking that they would kill this man because this man wanted a life jacket and they really felt like they were in the right for killing him. Thanks, old man, said the operator. The second man went on deck to get some more information. He was just in time to jump overboard before the Titanic went down. The wireless operator and the body of the Negro who tried to steal his belt went down together. So that's how they gonna say. Say he went down as a thief for asking for a lifeboat. Okay, if this is not clear, you guys can go to the video I'm getting ready to download, okay? Remember, if you want to order a book, you have um, I am independent. So you have to go directly through me through my email. Give me seven business days to um, to get you guys your book back. And you can PayPal me too. $15.